know, I think uh, <clears throat> things got a little crazy for Ash, and he hopped in his Jeep. <laughs> let his wind, it, let his hair, you know, go through the wind. <laughs> Driving along, and he saw the roadhouse. He's like, oh, I'm gonna stop for a beer. <laughs> saw these two fine ladies, and <laughs> they took him in. Kind of uh, said, you know, they knew what he was about. You know, he brought a lot to the table, and. Uh, Sleep and and I looked after him. Yeah. <laughs> was man about the house. And they looked after me, and yeah. you know, it was, it was great. <laughs> well, I think they're all a bunch of misfits, right? These three just don't fit their square pegs and round holes, so I think it was more of an attraction to each other. They're not mainstream. You know, me and my daughter, we live a fairly dark life. You know, we're working with hunters and that kind of stuff, but he's an oddball in his own right. Ash, of course. Not Chad, although Chad is too. You know what I mean? So I think they were drawn to each other because they live a very alternative life to everybody else. Where did Ruby ask that, though, from the green? Okay, now, yeah, you, you, yes, yeah. I mean, other than them being hot and us yeah. seeing that they're hot. <laughs> oh, no, I, I always gotta go first. I don't know if I... I mean, there's so many that you're around them all the time. Because there's never, not a, there's never a scene, I don't think, that I was ever in that they weren't sort of indirectly in. So they're memorable to work with because... They're fun, they're professional, they know what they're doing, they don't get stuck in their heads, they're normal guys. You know, they're not these actors that need to go and have a moment here and then come in and, you know, they're not like that. They're really, hey man, how's it going? You know, eating potato chips and then, oh, action, okay, and then they'll go off and do it, so. <laughs> every minute was pretty memorable with them. The, I, the one thing I could say is Jared, um, love him, has a short, shorter attention span. <laughs> So he was always a prankster. There was always he was always up to something bad because he just he, you know you're on set 16 hours a day. His attention span they start to get bored. And when they got punchy at the end of the day, they would start their their accents came out. They were getting tired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they would start getting goofy because they were overtired and they were overworked and they could run this so many times. So you have to keep an eye on Jared. <laughs> Jensen was a little more straight up, but. Yeah, but Jared, if you didn't see him, you worried. <laughs> like, where is he? And it smells like farts in here. <laughs> and he walked in with a you know, can of wine. It's like, oh, uh, and you knew you got it. He'd come up with this thing that, that frozen air gas. But that something used to blow the camera out. But it was dry ice, but it was in a gun. And he would go really slowly. It was like a, holding a match to the, You didn't feel it at first, and all of a sudden it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Jared was attached to this. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they were just always last. I mean, we're always having a good time, you know, passing broke back mountain jokes back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and really, those two are the sweetest guys in the world. They really are down to earth, very, very, you know, it's just a pleasure to work with and made me feel comfortable and there was no ego whatsoever, yeah. Um, I remember, I think it was my first day on set and Jared tried to get me to drink this, this iced coffee that he had convinced everybody was really good and he went around with t pretty much everyone and convinced them to take a sip and he put soy sauce in it or something. <laughs> and it was really silly but he got everyone and he was so amused and so happy. <laughs> Well, with Kim Manners, because Kim is not the tallest guy in the world. <laughs> and they're it's extremely tall. Yeah, he's a very little guy. It's and like they're this. very tall, and what they would do is that every time he would come and give directions, they would stand in front of him and kind of do that so no one could see him. <laughs> and uh, and they, they, they pranked him when we were shooting, um, what was it? Oh, uh, No Exit, yeah. So you know about that story where they, they show, I think they show it in the gag reel where they pour water on them. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I was done shooting. I was done for the day, but I stayed. <laughs> yeah, it was just to watch that, because they deserved it. 
Yeah, they burned each other a lot. It was a lot of fun to be around. It's a real big family. They get along really well. The cast, the crew, like Chad was saying, no ego. So it's a family. They don't walk off and do their own thing. When they're between shots, they'll talk about life. The camera guys are good friends. Jensen, for Christmas, got his own, what did you call that thing? When you, the director's the monocolor, the what was it? Was it a $100 oh, eyepiece that the crew got for Jensen because you know he's always playing around with the camera and playing around with them. Like They were a big family. So it was nice to just be around that. And we were lucky, the three of us were very lucky to have been around that because there's a lot of sets that you work on that aren't like that. Or they're cold, or they're separate, and most, you know. I would say most are like that. Yeah, unfortunately, but those boys, they set the pace because they're good guys. They work no very hard. hard. They work so hard. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They're professional, they know their lines, they do the job, they do it well. It's, we were lucky, it was a treat for us to be